Hello students, myself Shiraz Hindocha and we are going to start with physics subject of standard 12. So begin with the first chapter that is electric charges and electric fields. Now let us take the intro of this chapter with our real life example. Here you can see the thunderstorm. We know the cause obviously but along with that we share two more examples like in winter season, when you take off your sweater, you, you hear some sounds of tickling. It's actually the spark, right? And when you're sleeping in a woolen blanket, when you remove it out, you see the sparkles at the night. Now, why does it happen? We know the answer. That is static electricity. Yeah, you got it right. Now, in this chapter, we will study about static charges. That is a branch of physics which is known as electrostatic deals with the static charges, their forces, the electric field and potential. So moving on, this electric charge, the kind of a property was firstly, like you know, experimentally tested. It was not an experiment going on, but he found it. The guy was Thales of Miletus in Greece in 600 BC. Oh, that's far back. What did he observe? That's important. He found out that when an amber is rubbed with wool or a silk cloth, it attracts some lighter object. It's amazing for him at that time. Definitely it would be like you know, a kind of a phenomenon like, whoa, for us it's normal, quite normal. But as the chapter says, I have to go in that particular way. Now, as you can see over here, this is a very common observation found in the physics that you take a plas two plastic rods, one is in your hand, one is hanged up with the silk thread. Okay. Now you rub it with the silk cloth. I prefer silk cloth. Okay. Now both of them acquire same point of, kind of some quantity. What is that? That's not to be discussed right now. That's in the next slide. So you rub out with the silk cloth. They acquire certain kind of quantity. So they repair. In the figure B, you see that we take plastic rods. Again, you rub with the silk cloth. They repair. But in the third diagram. You see, I take one glass rod and I take one plastic rod. They both are rubbed with the same material. Now, they attract. Amazing. Huh. We have to say it because it's given in the chapter. It's amazing. Then, the experiment which is cited over here, that is, they've taken pith balls. Right? You rub it with the same kind of an uh, cloth, like either with silk or with wool. If it is rubbed with the same material, they will repair. Right. But if they are rubbed with a different material, say one is with silk and one is with wool, they will attract. Ah, a good observation. Ears took out and the conclusion, the conclusion was very nice. As you can see in the slide, how, like, you know, mentioned few points about this particular topic. They found out that they have electric charges. <clears throat> very nice observation. I appreciate. And they can, concluded one thing that light charges repels and opposite charges attracts that means unlike charges attracts like charges repels they gave it a name that it is electric charges great now the thing which was differentiating both of them that property is called polarity of charges later on it was found out that charges are not born they develop now how that's in the next slide here you can neutralize the charge you can develop the charges and in this whole discussion for years and years and years back after the discovery after sorry there came a guy who was known as benjamin franklin he said that there are two charges give it a name positive negative mm -hmm. good job and moving on next comes that we now we know there are two charges positive and negative how to measure it how to detect it that they are present somewhere in the book it is written it is done with the help of gold leaf electroscope how does it look in the textbook it's given in a bottle where there is a rod of metal with a, a cork over it and blah, blah, blah. leave it so you can just see it in the textbook but over here in the slide you can see that how and gold leaf electroscope looks like okay in the second image over here you can see the actual mechanism there is a metallic sphere connected with the metallic rod and below that there is two gold foils. Now, when you bring a charged object near the sphere, obviously 
there are certain like you know development of the charges okay and that charges moves towards the gold foil that takes place a uh, kind of an uh, like we can say a v shape uh, like uh, like there's a separation between the two foils of the gold that indicates that charges is present because the foils will repel each other that's a great thing i'll show you this phenomenon in one of my other video that how electroscope works but for now remember if you want to measure the electric charge we use electroscope that's good moving on the next slide is about electric charge as i mentioned we can develop the charges now in today's world as per the modern physics we all know that matter is made up of atoms and we also know that atom is electrically neutral now we'll just talk about a peripheral discussion because an atom is made up of only three things as per your level one is nucleus in which there are neutrons and protons and outside the nucleus there are electrons which are revolving now protons are inside the nucleus so it's very difficult to pull them out so let them be inside we don't want to talk with them until and unless we reach the chapter of nuclear physics here we'll talk about the electron if an atom which is electrically neutral loses the electron it becomes positive and if an atom gains an electron it becomes negative you must have learned this chemistry and i am a physicist so we'll continue with the physics part when an atom loses an electron becomes positive it gains an electron becomes negative this is how the charges were developed in the static section which we were discussing ahead now moving in this part then comes the topic which is called conductors and insulators now there's a favorite song of mine i have to speak it because it's in the script favorite song of mine the actress is my favorite that is sunny leone's song that is ye duniya pital sounds very known to us right so what happens over here that is earth is discussed in conductor earth is a conductor can you imagine earth is a conductor yes earth behaves as a universal thing and universal source of electron see this guys it is a universal source as well as a sink of electrons but topic is conductors and insulators i just took earth to explain you this concept but now if an object readily gives you the electron that means it allows the electrons to flow through it they are called conductors and the one which does not allows they are called insulators so you take pure water it's a insulator it does not conduct electricity you take human beings or animals they are conductors uh, apart from the sun copper wire is a very good conductor cold wire a good conductor but a rubber is an insulator but remember earth is a universal source as well as sink that means it's a conductor okay now the concept of earthing is very well known to us in 10th standard also we have learned something called earthing we take a green wire and put it in the earth and yep yeah. but the concept understanding will be provided over here what happens see suppose i take a metallic uh, object like say iron or a refrigerator or an ac it is a metallic body if there are leakage of charges over there those extra charges are grounded via like a green wire which we have learned to the earth that's called grounding and we know it very well moving ahead so the next topic is charging by induction till now we saw that when the two objects comes in contact with each other due to friction they develop the opposite polarities right but now we will charge the body without touching them the topic is charging by induction okay now in this consider two metallic spheres give them the name a and b they are mounted over insulated fan now bring out one of the positively charged rod near to the sphere a you will see that the free electrons from both the spheres due to attraction towards that positive charge will travel to sphere a and on sphere b you will find positive charges okay now step number 3 separate the spheres a and b from each other now sphere a will have negative charge and sphere b will have positive charge now take away the rod okay still you will see that 
A has a total negative charge and B has positive charge. But you see, they are not equally distributed because they are close to each other. So what we need to do is separate them to a larger distance. So you will see that on sphere A, whole negative charge will be equally distributed on the surface and on sphere B, total positive charge will be developed over there, okay? And that is equally distributed on the surface. So this process is called charging by induction. Followed by this, there is a numerical. We'll not take into this video. That is, a, that is in a separate video where I'll discuss only about numericals. So moving to the next topic, that is properties of the electric charges. In that, first of all, we need to talk about a small concept of point charges. Now, when the two bodies have the electric charge upon them and the dimensions are smaller compared to the distance between them, then in that case, we consider them as point charges. Okay, so now starting with the first property, that is additivity of charges. Now, charges obeys simple rules of algebra, which I love the most. That means 1 plus 2, wow, you guessed it right, that's 3. 2 plus 2, 4. That's it. Same logic is applied over here. You take two positive charges and three positive charges, total charge with you is five positive charges. But now, if you have five positive charges and six negative charges, then the total charge with you is minus one. Simple algebraic rules of, like you can say, addition and subtraction. That's it. But the equation shown over here, maybe like, you know, it will be like, is it a simple algebraic? Yes, you can just see Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus plus, plus up to up to up to up to up to Qn. That is equals to summation starting from I is equals to 1 running till N Qn. Okay. Going to the second property of the charges, that is conservation of charge or charge is conserved. This is just similar to the conservation of energy. But here, we just change certain words because charge is now the heroic body in this one. So first of all, consider an electrically isolated system. Okay. In this system, a charge object cannot enter or cannot exit. Okay. So now consider a photon. A photon is electrically neutral and it is shooted towards this electrically isolated system. As this chargeless things or chargeless thing in our example enters the system, it splits into the two charges, a positive one and a negative one. The positive charge is positron or anti-electron and the negative charge is electron. Now in this case, I spoke a word positron, not the proton. Please take into consideration, positron is the anti-electron, okay? Now, the mass of the electron and positron are same, but both of them have different polarities. That's why we use the word positron and an electron. Now, just go into a remind section. Before a few minutes, in the box, there were no charges. That means charge was zero. After that particular photon came inside the body and it split it into two charges, that means a pair was produced. One was positive, one was negative. Go back to the first property, plus one, plus one, minus. That means minus one. What is the answer? Zero. So we can see that total charge remains unaltered. This is the statement. Charge is conserved. That is the statement. In an electrically isolated system, the total charge remains unaltered. Got it? Moving on to the next property, that is third one, and that is quantization of charge. Now this is based on the modern idea but it is very easy to understand. Now, in India, we have the currency notes of 2000. Suppose I have a bundle of 2000 rupees in my hand and now I'm like, you know, throwing away the money in the, like in Indian weddings, it's very common that people for money, right? Imagine the first one, the first note goes off 2000 subtracted from the total amount. Second one, again, 2000 subtracted. Third, fourth, now, every time the reduction in the amount is in a specific step size, that is of amount 2000. Now, this will be very nicely correlated with the quantization of charge. Now, just remember this example, but come to this mathematical expression. 
capital Q is equal to any. Capital Q is the amount of charge on any body or an or any object. And n is an integer. That means it's a number. Okay. And e is the charge of a fundamental particle called electron. Now, on an any object, the total charge is always in the multiple of e. Okay. So we can say that either a body can have one electron, two electron, three electron, four electron, and so on. Or a body can lose one electron, two electron, three electron. Got it? So the step size is fixed, like the two thousand currency note. Got it? Now that e, which is appearing in the equation, has a specific value that is to be taken as one point six cos ten to the power minus nineteen coulomb. Okay. Coulomb is the SI unit. We are coming to that. So now I hope that quantization is completely into the brain. Quantization means a fixed amount of charge can be only there over a body. Depending on this formula, there are numericals following this. Now, as I said about the uh, this SI unit of the charge, that is Coulomb, indicated by capital C. But one Coulomb of charge is quite a huge quantity. You see, that's a huge quantity. Uh, if you calculate it out from this, you will get that is something about 6.25 cross 10 to the power 18 electrons in one coulomb of charge. That's a very huge amount. Okay, so we use other units of charge, the amount of charge. The first is one milli coulomb. Yes, I'm perspiring because this is a quite you know uh, tense room. So please come back. One milli coulomb, that is ten to the power minus three coulomb. The next is one micro coulomb, that is ten to the power minus six coulomb. Next, one nano coulomb, that is ten to the power minus nine coulomb. And one pico coulomb, that is equal to ten to the power minus twelve coulomb. So, these are the units which we have to memorize. Now, here we just end the first session. and you can see that if you want to attend the live online lectures if you want to join my classes or you have some doubts which you want to be solved out or you want to have some materials and notes any of the practical sessions if you want to have it you can contact on the numbers which is given over here on the screen and feel free to contact me thank you